Today is a good day. Today is a Strix day. And what really excites me about Strixes, is that's a word, is the fact that uh, the rock team really take this motherboard as an occasion to show their passion. And gone are the days when motherboards were only judged upon their abilities. <laughs> oh, child. Today, it's all about what they can do and how good they look while they're doing it. Today, we are reviewing the excellent ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi from Asus, which does set new standards in terms of engineering, excellency and gorgeousness. Fun fact for you, in my younger days, if you looked close enough, engineering excellency and absolute gorgeousness were tattooed on both of my tails. Well, each, I mean each, you know, the So the ROG is Asus upper tier enthusiast gaming focused lineup of motherboard and the Strix it's entry level but watch out because the Strix uh, breaks down in three different kind of motherboards and the E series is its most premium. It's also Asus engineering opportunity to have a lot of fun and to save all to cost related preoccupations because this gorgeous piece of gaming heaven now costs close to 500 bucks a piece. Far are the days when you could get one of those for 250 bucks. Now, starting with the obvious. The first thing to notice here is that the ROG Strix Z790E has an 8 PCB layers ATX board, which is a big deal since those two little extra PCB layers will positively affect about everything on this board, going from the VRM heat dissipation, audio clarity, PCI signal isolation, to a more extended lifespan. Something which does bring up the overall desirability of this motherboard. Design-wise, well, the Strix shares a lot of similarities with its previous Z690 iteration, which is not bad news because Asus has obviously spent quite a bit of time and money to provide those boards with the most imposing cooling blocks it has ever seen. It's angular, it's spacey, it's aggressive, and most importantly, the metal finish is second to none. And absolutely kudos for this gorgeous piece of ass-us. Ass -us. RGB wise, well, right on, on our eye roofing, we do have a very nice rug eye logo staring back at us with its 65 million shades of colors. And if that's not enough, we have four RGB Aura compliant connectors, three of which are addressable. Enough lighting to keep you awake for hours, reminding you that getting late is not one of the things you're gonna be doing tonight. Now, CPU socket wise, we do have our usual LG1700 socket, which does support both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors and introduces the brand new PCIe 5.0 standard to our motherboard, which by the way, is very well utilized on the Strix, as you will see later on this review. Now, VRM wise, well, uh, the Strix decided to go nuclear overkill and assembles 1,700 amps worth of non-ecologically friendly juice to galvanize the laziest of CPUs. I mean, obviously, this is more than you'll ever need to clock and overclock any CPUs brought up by Intel. I mean, the only advantage of having such an overcharged VRM would be if you were going uh, nitrogen cooling on this, but yeah, none of us will. Back on Earth, in operating such a massive VRM, heat will be produced. And ASUS went ballistic with its cooling components, providing a gorgeous premium copper pipe linked two-stage block. The main block shows a large extended radiating roof supported by an impressively thick wall to store VRM heat in its more intense usage. The side block shows a three-level high stage, providing several physical radiating steps as well as a wide body for heat storage. And obviously, both of our blocks feature a double contact design providing a direct thermopadded contact to both chokes and power stages for a faster heat dissipation. And finally, I would be amiss not to mention the 8 PCB layers, which do provide a more intimate heat relief to the VRM through its soldered points. Results are consequently exemplary. With a severely overclocked i7-13700K, the main and side blocks remain homogeneously cool, keeping the temps below 50 degrees Celsius at all time, making this board uh, um, much more suited uh, 
uh, to be coupled with higher tier processors such as the i7 and i9K class. Memory wise, our Strix Z790 e supports 128GB of DDR5 RAM, overclockable, wait for it, to 7.8GHz. Well, on paper, I mean, this said, this is about or almost the highest clock you can hope out of DDR5 sticks and something which will do quite a bit of difference on memory centric tasks such as you know content creation 3d rendering etc but also with such high clocks it will have a definite impact on your day-to-day -day gaming which is not something i say every day but when you go to almost 8 gigahertz it is particularly noticeable on our current AAA game so yeah, definitely a big, large memory kudos to Asus for this. Now, staying in the memory, our Strix can support no less than five M.2 solid-state drives, including a PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid-state drive connector, something I am delighted to see because this is a unique instance where we can reap the full bandwidth benefits of the brand new PCIe 5.0 a standard since it will allow this M.2 solicited drive to swap data up to a whooping 128 gigabit per second which obviously will change your day-to-day -day computing experience. Now the four other sticks can run up to a still very fast PCIe 4.0 standard meaning up to 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap each. And knowing that sticks do get really hot really quickly, Asus went crazy banana on its cooling solution and I do need to break this down. The CPU link PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solicit drive received a lot of attention and a lot of money, starting with a double-sided thermal pad configuration, which is a rather good idea. And as heat shield goes, we got this long and very thick heat shield, which comes with its own bended copper pipe, which exhausts all its accumulated heat onto its own personal radiating plate. I mean, we had seen something very similar on the previous iteration of this motherboard, and obviously it does remain you know, overkill but it looks so absolutely badass it gives an almost mechanical cylindric engine look to the motherboard which uh, 80 kids like me i absolutely fell in love with and those are the reasons why we're paying such a big premium on those kind of higher tier motherboard for weird almost useless but so cool looking features like that. As for the four remaining M.2 solid set drive goes, we have thermal padded thick, and I mean really thick heat shields. I don't think I ever seen heat plates were that thick, which obviously do a wonderful job at keeping our uh, M.2 solid set drives away from the terrible uh, thermal throttling spaghetti monster. Overall, a very premium and agile M.2 solid set drive based storage solution, which does represent uh, a major upgrade when you look at the Z690 previous year iteration, since we're going from three to five M.2 solid state drive connectors. And let us not uh, forget to mention that all of our connectors have been equipped with an excellent Asus very own screwless mechanism, which I do find really useful, really robust, and well, much better than whatever the competition came up with so far. So yeah, that is uh, definitely a very easy uh, storage kudos to Asus for this. Now, since we're in storage, I do need to mention our reduced SATA 3 presence, only showing four plugs now, which I do agree with, uh, given such a strong M.2 storage availability. Now, expansion-wise, we do have three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the CPU-linked one gets a full 16 PCIe lanes treatment, therefore this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. But most importantly, it is also the only one running at the very fast and new PCIe 5.0 standard, allowing data swaps up to 64 gigabytes per second. But if you do run a PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive stick, the GPU slot will only get 8 PCIe 5.0 lanes for a total of 32 gigabytes per second worth of bandwidth. And the good news here is that who cares? Because none of the current video cards on the market, and at least for another two to four years, will be able to go beyond 32 gigabytes per second each way of, of data transfer. So even if it is only 8 PCIe 5.0 lanes, it will never ever bottleneck anything uh, you're gonna throw at it. Now, the two other naked slots respectively support four lanes at PCIe 4 standard for a total of eight gigabytes per second. Not bad for an additional PCIe based storage solution. And one lane at PCIe 3 standard for mere one gigabyte per second, which will do the trick for a capture card. Great for streamers. Finally, let me note the presence of Asus very own and upgraded PCIe slot release mechanism, which has been improved, simplified, and seems so much more robust 
than its first iteration last year. So yeah, well done there Asus, well done indeed. Now, back IO-wise, first let me note the presence of our integrated back IO, always reassuring, and starting from the left, we have our HDMI and DisplayPort output for our integrated graphics, four USB third generation able to transfer data up to 5 gigabit per second each, our clear CMOS and flashback button, which I'm very happy to see here, eight USB 3.2 generation, all able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except this one, which is a dual channel type C, therefore able to transfer up to whooping 20 gigabit gigabit per second. Next we have our 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, our dual band Wi-Fi 6E able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster 6 gigahertz radio spectrum, and finally our premium 7.1 channel Realtek 4080 ALC codec serviced by a generous 700 microfarads worth of capacitor which will do an excellent job at rendering deep bass but most importantly will do studio graded job at recording as well. Especially great for streamers. Now, overall, um, well, it's premium as it gets. Connectivity is great, although given the pricing, I would have loved seeing a 5 gigabit LAN instead of a 2.5, but <laughs> that's me. Uh, bandwidth wise, the back IO can output a total close to 95 gigabit per second, which forces our streaks to, uh, well, compete with its much more expensive hero siblings. So yeah, uh, nothing to complain about here. Now, chipset wise, well, our streaks is powered by the brand new Z790 chipset from Intel, which in all and for all is very similar to its Z690 predecessor. They both run on the same low 6 watts, which is great, and necessitate only a low-profile heat shield to keep it under 40 degrees Celsius at all time. For the rest, the Z790 does show a 20% more total PCIe bandwidth output and a little bit of uh, PCIe standard reshuffling, but other than that, it's, it's yeah. Well, that's about it. Now, front panel connector wise, apart from our usual two second generation USB connector and our two five gigabit front panel connector, we have a dual channel type C able to transfer up to 20 gigabit per second and fast charge up to 30 watt your phone. Now that is a subtle, small and useful upgrade. So yeah, a uh, simple, efficient and practical. Loving it. And finally, let me know the presence of our Thunderbolt 4 card connector, which if used will provide an emergency extra 40 gigabit per second worth of output, always appreciated. Cooling wise, our board has a healthy eight PWM fan connectors, one of which can support a water pump, well, which is more, you know, than you'll need uh, to entertain, uh, how to say, classical to intermediate water cooling solution. But I would have liked, given the price of the board again, to see a second water pump uh, uh, connector so that we can have more intricate uh, custom water cooling solution on this board. So yeah, maybe something Asus wants to keep in this mind for the well next year iteration of the Strix E. Now troubleshooting wise, well, Asus went all in on this Strix as it did last year. Starting with our first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stage of our boots and providing a quick troubleshoot relief to our system. But most importantly, we have a Q error screen which will refine our troubleshooting experience to the very reason why your thing refuses to work. In addition, we have our nice fat soldered power button and our two clear CMOS and flashback whistle on the back IO. Overall, a very complete troubleshooting solution that uh, Asus made us accustomed to with its Strix series. Now, in conclusion, the ROG Strix Z790e gaming Wi-Fi will cost you 500 bucks before taxes, which is $70 more than its predecessor at launch. And the question is, is it worth the money? Well, yes, I wanna say. And, and I know the consequences this will have on my comment section. Uh, but yes, the Strix Z690e and the Strix Z790e share identical fundamentals, a very premium 8 PCB layers, an identical overcharged VRM, and an overall adoption of the PCIe 5 standard, both for GPU and M.2 solid state drive storage. But the ROG Z790e has also seen its storage abilities drastically increased from 2 to 4 PCIe 4.0 M.2 solid state drive, and its RAM performances were increased, which will be felt both on production and gaming for once. And these are new elements which change the very nature of the streaks and bring it much closer, and I want to say almost uncomfortably closer 
to its much more expensive uh, sibling, the Hero variant, uh, which when you look at this year's tricks, wonder what it can do better for all the money to ask on top of it. Well, in a nutshell, um, if you are looking for about one of the best premium gaming motherboard, an extremely durable and reliable product, despite rather uh, a high price tag, I find myself in the strange position to tell you well, that there is nowhere else your money wants to be. That's the truth.